And three. And a two. And a one. Six twenty twenty. I am Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. Yeah, that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. <laughs> Welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast with a determined length, episode number five fifty one, and we have a very enthusiastic Gary today. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little tired. <laughs> as well as one of our favorite guests, Edward Angelini Cook. Yay! Yeah. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> Which I'm not sure if we can hear him. Yeah. Oh no! Technical difficulties. By the way, this uh, this morning has been just full of uh, technical clusterfuck. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, um, I d- no, I guess not. I'm going to put them on the charge right quick. Okay. Cool. Darn it. But, hey, we can hear you, which is the, the important part. Yay! <laughs> uh, in As any he walks case, away. Well, he's putting on the charge. So. Uh, but uh, uh, today, so Gary, tell me something. Mm-hmm. Was this sparked by conversations we were having in Telegram from the entourage? Uh, <laughs> no, the, the, the topic was not directly uh, spawned from that, but... Um, as the plethora of resources made available to us by our guest uh, indicates, this is a hot topic. <laughs> and, we're, and we're not talking about the, the store that's in the mall. Correct. Um, there are a great many researchers, uh, journalists, individuals with opinions uh, discussing this very issue and therefore um, – it's it's on the tip of people's minds um, mm-hmm. in varying ways. And one of the more troubling uh, difficulties currently in the COVID-19 pandemic is that, you know, some people are not physically distancing and hooking up. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of really what spawned and prompted this. Um, I had asked, you know, Ed, about our continuing series on let's talk uh, about relationships um, and different subtopic parts. And then this occurred to me um, about that, you know, there's this whole thing going on about sex needs during the pandemic. And some people are making personal decisions that unfortunately can put others at risk. And uh, I think this is mostly about those that are not doing that. So they are at home either by themselves and or with partners. And uh, it's very challenging. Mm-hmm. And Ed was very enthusiastic about coming on and talking about the subject. So, uh, yeah, I was like, okay, let's let's do this thing. And I kind of was prepared slightly for the you know professionalism that he was going to bring to the document, um, <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, okay, there's a lot of stuff. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, so basically, uh, you know, um, uh, not a shocking news revelation or a spoiler. COVID-19 is not going away. Um, recently, uh, the World Health Organization, like, OK, so uh, Jeff said at the top of the show, it's Sunday the 26th. As of when we're recording this, the WHO or World Health Organization said that there is not an indication that individuals who have contracted COVID-19 are immune from reinfection. Or recontraction. Uh, 
that's a big deal because mostly when a person gets a virus, like they build up immuni- immunity to it or they don't. It goes mm-hmm. one way or the other. Um, and usually you build up an immunity because you overcome it. Um, your immune system does well with it. And, you know, that's how you get the fever and all the rest of that crap. So people have been having fevers and all these symptoms and stuff, but the WHO has decided through some studies that um, that's not necessarily going to be the case, that you're automatically not going to get sick again. And so mm. that means uh, for the landscape of our health and, and how we're physically distancing and community mitigation, that's not probably going to change anytime soon. Um, and now we're uh, where I am, we're five weeks into this um, because of my work with the Department of Health. For other people, it's six, seven, eight weeks. It's a long time to be restricted in your capacities of, of a, anything. It doesn't matter what it is, whether you're working from home, you're furloughed, you're unemployed, you are uh, <laughs> um, still working from home because you used to work from home, uh, you know, but now you can't really go hardly anywhere except for an essential business. And sex trade, newsflash, is not considered an essential business by governing bodies, at least in the U.S. as much as I know of. And so that's a whole other sector that's like been impacted um, of communities. So uh, we're facing quite a few challenges and people, no offense, people got needs. A group of us gave like online via Zoom (laughs) last night. We have a tendency to play the adult NSFW versions. Uh, some of the games get pretty damn dicey. Uh, <laughs> David knows because he was part of it. Um, it's it's a good the like NFL draft. For... Mm. It, it, well, it was a good stress relief, you know, release. Mm. Uh-huh. Not enough release, probably for some of us. Um, so that's why we have Ed here. Because Ed, <laughs> what, what's a person to do? <laughs> Oh, I mean, yeah, these are some really scary times. Um, and yeah, you know, the uh, we are well, so I think one of the other things that it's important to to say is, you know, this is a very traumatic time for a lot of people. And unlike some other traumatic experiences, Gary, like you said, like we're going on five weeks now. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, there are Typically, there right now there there isn't an end in sight. Um, I said to somebody the other day that it seems like we're living in a world full of commas and semicolons, um, <laughs> and we're just kind of waiting for that period to come. And it's not it's not visible right now, and that can bring with it a lot of different responses from people. Um, I recently took part in a webinar uh, with. Bessel van der Kolk, who's a researcher on trauma, um, it was incredible. And what he did was he uh, gave everybody a overview of uh, trauma reactions um, and how we can expect to see them right now. So, like he talked about, like um, you know, like to expect a lack of lack of predictability, and mobility, numbing out loss of time and and time permanence, safety, and uh, loss of connection. So what I thought would be really cool for us to do is to talk about those reactions um, in the context of sexuality and how we can mitigate those responses. Um, And, you know, Gary, like you said, uh, when you suggested this, I got so excited. All of my friends, all of my sexy friends were like, ooh, <laughs> I am so, that is so cool. Um, so, you know, like I, I just uh, connected with some of my friends from grad school and they were like, oh my God, we, we have to get the link for this. Uh, they were like, you have no idea how important this is. Oh. Uh, so, you know, it is like, this is going to really, this is transformed the, the experience of sex, of intimacy, of relationships. You know, as a as a sex therapist and a uh, a relationship therapist, um, I've had to get really creative uh, with the uh, with the work that I'm doing with uh, the people that I'm working with, and also with myself and my own relationships. Um, so so yeah, so I think like one of the um, you know important like things to say up front is that uh, when it comes to trauma, um, we have different responses. 
sexually to this. So uh, you will see some people who have an increased sexual libido at this time, or you may have people who have a decreased sexual libido at this time. Both of those are totally normal. Uh, so I just kind of want to put that up front. Um, that makes sense in some ways. Yeah. Yeah. Where are we all at right now, by the way? Just, just personally speaking. Me, I feel like I'm the same. I got okay. increased. Oh, gosh. Um, hmm. I would probably say a bit of an increase, but yeah, I, 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 you know, I'm probably, I would probably say that, um, a little bit more of an increase, even though, and just because everyone knows, um, I do have a partner at home, just, just so you're aware, like, I want to kind of put that out there as well. Like, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, you know, I know. It's understandable. Gary? Um. Yeah, so as a single individual, uh, I chalk this up to the, this is a horrible adage, like, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Um, <laughs> only in this case, lack of availability makes the thirst grow stronger. <laughs> um, and I think that's what a lot of folks, mm-hmm. like, that have increased libido, that's what they're feeling, because they don't have outlet, necessarily. Or even if you have a partner... And you may be perfectly satisfied with your partner, but if, especially if you have an open relationship, like it is not open now, theoretically. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it, it is still open. It just, you just can't really act on it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm going to totally uh, say no to that. Like, oh, really? I, I hope that, like, by the end of this, um, some of my open and poly people will be like, thank you, Edward, right? Because, um, you know, I think that there are some wonderful opportunities for us to still get those needs met, just not mm-hmm. in the way we have before, if you know what okay. I mean. Um, I really I hope that, that like, the goal from this is that it can really help increase some people's um, getting their needs met. Okay. I will be listening intently, maybe even <laughs> taking notes. <laughs> Just put it out there. Well, we have all I the show it, notes, so I, 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 I note yes. But like, I might want to just like jot some shit down. I was gonna say, David gonna get his notebook out on, on, on his table there at his desk. And... <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but anyway, um, well, yeah, it, it's it's. I think it's fair to say. That this, I keep, I know people keep, we keep using the word unprecedented. Like, that is big, like the big, like, what, dime or quarter word that people have been using more often to describe this situation. But it, I think it, it's, it's fair to say that, that there's no one in our, mostly in our lifetime, I would say that, have had to deal with something of this nature in certain ways. Meaning, mm-hmm. like, the government stepping in and saying, like, stay at home, you know, social distance, help, you know, you know, flatten the curve, all those things that are kind of out there. Um, the responsible portions of government. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, but we're at, a, we're at a new point in human evolution and development across the globe that we have this thing called public health and awareness of what that concept is and how to educate it and where it comes from a hundred plus years ago with the epidemic of the 1918 flu, there was some awareness, but like we were not interconnected like we are today. Mm -hmm. Like most of the globe has some access to technology that gives them information readily quickly. So the concepts of community mitigation and stay-at-home orders and physical distancing, um, PPE, all of this stuff is remarkable because we have the ability to pass that information around. We go back 100 plus years, people were relying on print media like via the local paper or like being called on the telephone on shared lines like to, to pass on information. So – you know, it, people like to make a lot of comparisons, but I'm like, it's not the same. Like mm-hmm. you, you, you really, uh, 
it, it's not it was the dark ages, but it's vastly different in terms of mm-hmm. what you could get for information. Um, you know, Ed's focus and career was like a glimmer in the eye at most in a lot of the world at that time. There was very few individuals like available and working in um, research and therapy regarding sex and relationships. Um, you know, it was a whole different time for for us. So it, it's interesting now that we have this ability. And I think a little bit, I only bring this up because I think sometimes we take things a little bit for granted. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that it's like, oh, it's not a big deal. Like, you know, I, I need to masturbate. So I'm just going to go jump on, you know, Pornhub or whatever your, you know, click thing is of preference. Um, but even that, as we're going to get into, I think with here with you, Ed, is like, that's not always enough. Um, mm-hmm. Especially because if you have a norm that you had going into this and that's still available, that probably has depleted or become um, deficient. And what it is that you're looking for. That's a guess on my part. But anyways, so uh, what do you want to start with? (laughs) Well, so um, I also want to say that, um, you know, with trauma, um, we have different responses, right? Like we've heard of the flight, flight and freeze response. And, uh, you know, that's going to come up a lot with this. Um, My response has been, uh, you know, if like this is like, say, like we're talking about this like a burning building, right? My response has been, I'm going to run into the building. I'm not going to run away. Um, so I'm looking at this uh, whole time as such an opportunity for me to grow as a person, to grow as a um, as a husband, to grow as a family member, to grow as a friend, to grow as um, a business, right? Like, so I just started a new business. Um, so... As far as perspective, I'm really, that is the way that I'm responding. And I would encourage people to find ways. And like another goal for this would be in order to have people change their perspective, um, change how they're responding to this, uh, you know. So uh, one of the things is like immobility, right? Like with the freeze response, a lot of people just are just not doing anything. Right. Um, and that's a, that's a valid response. Um, but I would encourage people to do something um, yeah. and to act, uh, to, to move, to get outside. Um, and, uh, you know, one of the things that I'm telling people is to maintain a schedule, um, you know, because a lot of times our uh, like our schedules have been completely destroyed. Um, and that can, that can bring up this meaning of this lack of predictability. Um, so having a schedule, um, can help, uh, mitigate that. And it can also be fun because then you can put stuff that you never would think to put in there. Like on my schedule, I have, I'm in the morning, I get up, I, uh, make my coffee and then I do my chores on animal crossing. Um, and that's in my schedule for a, for a half an hour. I'm going to, um, I'm going to do my chores, right? And then after that, I'm going to check my email, you know. Um, and my my schedule is very planned out. Um, I even have time on there to go to, um, to go outside for 15 minutes. Um, and uh, you know, I have time on there. Like what what we'll go into is, um, I have schedule times for myself to do what I want to do. If that is (laughs) um, some kind of self-reflection. So that can help mitigate that loss of predictability or that lack of predictability. Um, Have, uh, have, have the three of you been finding that um, that has been helpful? I've been pretty (sighs) lucky to, because I can work from home. It's, I'm basically maintaining my regular schedule anyways. The only difference is I don't have to drive to work. So I get a little yeah. extra time to myself before work instead of just in the car driving to work mm-hmm. and from work. So it, it gives me that little extra time, but otherwise it feels like, no, I, I'm doing basically the same things. Uh, maybe achieving more things more things uh in some of my games just because i have more time at home and things i can do but that's 
part of that is I'm lucky enough to be able to work from home. Uh, the yeah. only thing is I don't have the routine of like the, the, the daily shower because I don't go to work. <laughs> <laughs> well, so sometimes I, mean... I just don't shower for a day or two. <laughs> okay. Well, I might put that on your list. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Um, well, I think, you know, what means. Right. I was going to say what and I think part of what your response is like, you know, even though individuals like schedules or environments may have changed, you could still keep your routine the same. Now, as a person who worked from home for a good five plus years, that's very difficult. When you come from a, an environment where you leave and you go to work and you have to shower and you have to shave and you have to get dressed up and all that kind of stuff. And literally your bed is like. 15 feet away from you in your home, like on the other side of a wall, not all that much of a distance, it could be very challenging to put, to do the things at home that you used to do because the mind says, I don't have to do that. Exactly. Like no one's holding yeah. me accountable to dress in khakis <laughs> in a polo or mm -hmm. whatever, you know, it's like, I'm not Jake from state farm at this moment, bitch. I can do whatever I want. So <laughs> if I'm going to sit in my boxer briefs, you know, or my sweatpants with my VPL, like, well, that's just the way it is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Working at home naked, you know? Right. I mean, you know, I mean, there's been plenty of jokes, you know, about the new workforce that is working from home during the pandemic about, you know, how they are, you know, dressed from the camera up, so to speak, um, you know, and not otherwise. Unfortunately, so... not, not to have the camera on my Chromebox, so lovely. Um, for me, like again, when I was working from home, um, it was actually I got up every day like I was going to work because for me that was that was my thing, like that was my routine because I kept that and I kept that routine. Um, so and FYI, I, I part of my routine I kept like I I got up, I got to the went to the bathroom, I did my shower, I put on clothes like unfortunately I have a home office which is downstairs from my bedroom so it was kind of the you know the trip to work <laughs> as it were mm -hmm. and I could close a lot shorter, lot shorter. <laughs> and I also intentionally closed my office door so that I was at work. Now, was I like dressed up or anything? No, but that was the that would be the thing. That was the way I kind of kept that routine, and it really helped me while I was working to kind of do that because I could get into work mode and do what I needed to do. Um, since then, <laughs> since I was furloughed, which was basically this month, um, I'm still kind of waking up at like seven a.m. like I normally would. But I now just like I I stay in bed like, and it's I think that's probably just due to like we're saying like the immobility aspect of things like I don't really have a reason to get up in the morning, but I could see a reason to maybe maintain some kind of schedule. We have been around the house trying to um, do some cleaning, do some straightening do some some um, decluttering as it were because we've got time now where for the past since we bought the house like in 2015 we've not really had time to just like let's just sit and like tear down my office because my office was while well, i had a home office it was also the catch-all room <laughs> so it was it was really awesome to take um we took a couple of days actually and just like cleaned out the closet, cleaned out the, the office, and it looks so much better now. It's still a little bit cluttered, but that's because we are we can't really take things where they need to go, like we're donating stuff, mm -hmm. but you, no one's really taking things right now, so it's kind of like once we, once we, but we've set it away to where we know where it is, and once we're able to do it, we'll take care of it, so. Right. so yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, the other thing that 
I have been telling people is that the experience that we're going through is very much the narrative of depression because depression tells us um, don't put on clothes, don't get out of bed, don't take a shower, mm-hmm. don't with other people, don't do these. So like my depression, my depressed people are like, uh, this is very familiar. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, and you have developed this set of coping skills in order to like deal with this. And that's mm-hmm. incredible. So, um, you know, I think that it's, like what I'm telling people is what I tell my depressed people that mm-hmm. like, you know, having that routine, having those, um, those things that you do in order to maintain, um, a schedule, um, is going to be really helpful to alleviate some of those, uh, those symptoms that we're experiencing. Um, mm-hmm. so, uh, you know, and sometimes like as far as sex goes, um, sometimes we have to schedule sex, you know, like I said, I have specific times during the week, um, where I'm like, okay, between this time and this time I can, uh, engage in sexual activity. Um, Mm. I, um, you know, I can do this. Uh, I can have a date with my husband, right. Um, I can do these things. Um, and it just creates a, a uh, playing field for that to occur, if you will. I'm being very intentional about my schedule. Um, yeah. It's five o'clock, pants off. <laughs> or real. Um, yeah. If pants yeah. weren't even on to begin with. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the... Um, you know, we'll kind of go into it, but I think there's an opportunity here to say you have a friend who you um, haven't seen in a while, right? Like you met them at a um, at a bear run, you had some fun, um, and you're like, "Hey, you want to do a video call? Let's do a let's do a Skype. Um, let's do a Skype call. Um, kind of see what happens, right? See how they're doing. See what's up with them." Um, that has been really helpful for me. And if something sexual happens, that's cool too. <laughs> Ed, do you think... The... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> I was going to make a joke. Keep going. Oh, I was just going to ask Ed if you think... Um, where's the balance and the expectation of such a thing? The reason I say that is like, it's good to like reach out and, and have a conversation with somebody to follow up with someone that you've met previously. And I like how you're like, you know, and if, if you know something sexy happens, that's great. My concern is, is about like the expectation factor for folks. Yeah. That can, and that can be in the realm of possibilities, right? Like, Hey, when you're talking to somebody kind of bring it up, Hey, like, how are you doing? How are you, um, you, know, you can even say, hey, I'm really horny. Um, and uh, one of the reasons why I'm reaching out, I would I would like to I would like to play with you, right? Um, are you open to that? It doesn't have to happen. Um, but like there can be an agreement that, hey, within the realm of possibilities within this call, we could um, play digitally in a variety of ways, right? Like um, it doesn't always have to be, uh, you know, masturbation. Like we could even do, um, you know, some like role play. We can, uh, like one of my friends has said that uh, he's been reading um, erotic stories. Um, Hmm. uh, So, you know, I think that's a really good idea, right? There there are so many ways that we can do this um, where we can get our sexual needs met um and we don't have to show our penises <laughs> and that actually brings me up to a really um another important part um when we're talking about intimacy how many times have you well first let me pull the room uh does anybody in here enjoy video play do you actually actually enjoy it uh yes so when you say video play, sorry, I don't, mean to, <laughs> don't mean to be so pain in the ass about it, but do you mean live stream with another individual or do you mean just like observing, watching, uh, and or it's pre-recorded? Like uh, to me, there's a lot of possibilities with that statement. You got a good point there. I'm talking about we're going to, um, I'm going to call you on FaceTime or some kind of platform and we're going to 
engage in some kind of sexual activity. Okay. Um, cool. Um, so, oh, it's so weird. Maybe if that, I mean, that's kind of like, it, it, it's hard for me to, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking about it and I, you, like I, I would normally like be like, no, absolutely not. Cause that's not my thing. Cause I've always had the opportunity to just like dial a dick as it were, you know, but mm -hmm. Maybe like now, especially now, like it okay. would be Gary. Uh, no, dog, that's a pass for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I just, I just know that about me. Like, I'm very much a voyeur. Like, high percentage, like voyeuristic tendencies. Enjoy watching. Um, being like the concept of being sneaky, being secret, being hidden, and watching and observing. Totally like my gig. Um, for people to watch me or to have a reciprocal, like one-on-one, -on -one, not in the moment, not now, I do not feel good about my my physical self at this time in my life. So that's the last thing I would want to do is make myself available to like be seen. Um, mm, cool. I'm, just, I'm just being honest. I'm just putting it out there. Like that's just the way it is. Now, I'll be fair. I've never really had that experience in my life that I know that I – I think it's ebbs and flows. So, like, was there a time in my past where I would be more likely? Yes. But right now, no. All right. Jeff? Not really. Okay. Uh, I, mean, I mean, what your aspect? If, if there was a couple or a living at home group that wanted to Skype and I could watch. I would even have my video camera up and I would, like, be jacked off watching them or something. But it's not really my thing. Okay. Um, I mean, totally not. It's not really like my thing either. Um, uh, but like, kind of like what Damon said that we're we're living in, um, you know, in a in a a new situation here. So, uh, you know, one thing that I have been doing, um, or like possibly encouraging people to do is, um, what would it be like to, um. Uh, do a video chat or whatever and say you're masturbating, um, but you're not showing your, your junk. You're just kind of keeping the camera on your face. Interesting. Because, and the reason why I say that is, uh, when we're talking about intimacy, do you know that people um, struggle the most with orgasming with their eyes open? No. Well, now you do. So, like, one of the things that I'm, like, recommending is to, like, you know, when we're talking about that loss of connection, I think that there's a really cool, interesting time for us to build connection um, by uh, doing, like, a video chat uh, masturbation section with another person where you don't see their junk at all. You're just looking at their face while they are uh, – while they're, while they're masturbating, um, and you're doing the same. I think that's fun. <laughs> um, and, uh, and maybe it has been a lot of fun for me. <laughs> well, I mean, that that's interesting. And I find that to be a challenge to our audience, to like the listeners and the viewers, like respectively, like I'm just thinking about like, it's no secret. I enjoy being on a certain website. It's called Chatterbait. Like lots of, <laughs> lots of models um, individuals are on there on camera. I think physiologically, it's very challenging for people to have an orgasm with their eyes open because there's so much concentration going into the orgasm in that moment physically that the body naturally like goes through a lot of um, stress rigidity, like physicality wise. Mm -hmm. So I was just thinking about your like, you know, keep your eyes open. And I was like, that could be very difficult, I think, for some people. Well, uh, well, because it's you most likely all of your life, if you like, if you have it, it kind of intended on like watching yourself orgasm. Do you know what I mean? Like, like to keep your eyes open that you would probably be like, I don't think I've ever kept my eyes open when I've, you know, gotten yeah. off. I have to think about it. And I think I have, and I, cause sometimes 
for me, just I, I'm I'm a very like a, a visual ish person. So I like looking um some of the porn I like watching. I like watching people's faces in porn. Like I like mm-hmm. watching things happening as they're happening. Like it it's very interesting to me while the you know the cum shot and what is important if if the like faces and stuff aren't fake like because it's porn you know because sometimes it's just like there's the they're coming and they go to their face and it's like they're, oh like like no i don't i don't want that i want like i want to see the actual like physical reactions in your face as you are coming like those are that's kind of a i like seeing that because that helps me so writing it down (laughs) (laughs) so so Gary I want to say yeah I totally get it and like uh, I'm not saying that this is going to be accessible for for all people um, but I think that like when we're talking about uh, building connections with others I think this is a really wonderful uh, sexual suggestion um, in order to like kind of uh, maintain and also create connection because like one of the things that I've heard from people are well what about getting into our new relationship can I get into a new relationship and I'm here to say absolutely motherfucking lootly mm-hmm. um you definitely can you just have to do it differently right now uh and you know like so that kind of brings me into the like immobility time like we can't really go out to restaurants right now we can't really have date nights um if we're say a single person um what i'm suggesting is that we we try to utilize what we have our resources like you know like skype facetime things like that um i have like not sexually um i have had a lot of fun uh, watching musicals with my friends over um, over FaceTime Messenger. I have had a lot of fun just connecting with my family. Right, we celebrated my um, uh, one of my nephew's birthdays. Um, mm-hmm. You know, like uh, I I'm looking at that positively, but we can also do that from a date perspective. Um, like we can utilize those um, platforms in order to go places um to not be mobile or to to not be immobile um so one of the one of the resources that i put in there was 24 dates that you can try at home um and i think that for our poly people out there who may have um some partners who do not live with them who live at a distance um if they're not doing this um, already because of that, because um, this is definitely one of the strengths of that community, uh, this is something I would recommend is to uh, look at that. Look at the different dates that you can try it, um, try at home and then also um, like virtually, right? Like watching those movies. Um, um, and then one of the other things that I uh, put on there was the 36 questions that lead to love. So if you are uh, cre- starting a new relationship with somebody, whether that's like a friend or a um, like a romantic interest, these are some things that you can do communication wise um, that can help build that intimate relationship with somebody without even touching them. And that's powerful to me. Um, so, um, so yeah, like, so what are, what are some, or have you heard of some cool things that people have been doing um, virtually to kind of maintain that connection with each other. I mean, playing games online. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, that... I, I, I play WoW, so I get a social interaction with my guilds. Um, and also d d although the last few weeks it's been canceled. This last one was because of a lost puppy. They found oh. Her. Yeah, I mean it. It's things that are we, you hear about that you you know like going like doing the virtual museum trips and doing things where um, you're apart but together, kind of doing the same thing. I kind of like that idea. Um, and I mean, some I've I've heard a lot of people doing it on their own, but I know like couples do it together. Um, I have friends in um, here in town who are hosting virtual dance parties in their kitchen like it's um him and his husband 
and they it, they literally like they make some cocktails they turn on music they have like lights and and like a disco almost like a disco ball kind of thing the led like circular things and they they like dance around in our kitchen and they invite people to come watch and it's i i for me I thought at first, I'm like, this is stupid. But then I'm like watching them as they're doing it and they're having fun. They're enjoying it. And for all they know, I mean, I'm sure they're probably keeping track, but for all I know, no one else is watching, but they're still like having fun and going around like one of them. They, the last one I saw, they, um, they did um, Let It Go. And one of the guys like threw on a wig, like an awful blonde wig and like put on a dress and everything and just like like did the whole like choreography thing to it. It was it was cute. But it's something that they were doing together and it also, you know, it was helping them, I think, because they were able to, you know, have fun in their own kooky way, but also sharing that with other people, you know maybe strangers, maybe their friends, you know, getting to know and see like something that they want to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, One of my cousins uh, is actually, actually hosts a little bingo ish sort of thing uh, at 1230 every day on her Facebook page or yeah, on Facebook. Cause she doesn't have a page. It's just her individual profile, but you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And even uh, some companies are getting into it, such as Wizards and their affiliate companies have uh, actually basically uh, given free modules available. Like on Roll20, you can actually play Lost Minds with Vandelver for free. You don't have to pay for it at all until I think it was like May something right now. Um, so there are companies that are actually out there giving access to to things for people to do online and still be able to to enjoy and socially interact and D is a very social game i would say yeah um so like yeah so people are getting really creative and i just encourage people to do that um sexually uh and then also uh like intimately uh, with the other connections in your life, right? Like just because we can't interact with each other, um, like personally, um, does not mean that we have to shut down, um, intimacy, uh, with other people. doesn't mean that we have to like, uh, to not start new relationships. Um, uh, because that's, uh, that would really go against our human condition. Um, because we are, we are, we are beings that, that, require attachments to others, um, in order to survive. Uh, and, you know, um, I think that one of the other things is we're also very adaptable. Um, so, you know, here's an opportunity where we can adapt our situation in order to, to create, um, to create relationships with others. Um, so, with that, um, also some of the responses to, uh, this pandemic have been numbing out. Um, so like I have been seeing, um, increased alcohol and drug use with some of my clients. Um, and one of the other responses can be, um, like where I said that our libido can be increased. Sex is also an escape and it kind of takes us out of our body sometimes. Um, so I just encourage people to be aware about that when you are having that thought, like, Hey, I want to go masturbate right now. Why do you want to go masturbate? Is it because you want to not engage with the present moment? Or um, do you feel like that's something that you want to do for your own needs? Um, So one of the suggestions that I'm uh, giving people is to engage in mindful masturbation, which is combines two of my favorite things, mindfulness and masturbation. Uh, (laughs) uh, And uh, there are two, uh, I, I included a, a link to a uh, YouTube where they give you a step-by-step on how to engage in mindful masturbation, which is all about just um, uh, like decreasing or eliminating any kind of distraction between you and your body. Uh, So that's like porn, that's um, like erotica, anything that is outside of your body, like even fantasies. Um, 
And this is something new. Like, I mean, I'm a porn guy. I like porn. Uh, so to shift from um, getting my stimulation uh, visually to internally is different. Um, but it's also very sensual and very erotic. <laughs> so, um, so, and there are also some toys that you can use. Uh, and the, uh, there's another... Um, link that I put for the, pl the pleasure chest. And there are some cool things there. Like, uh, like there was this thing, it's like kind of like a ring that you can put on your cock. Um, and it like vibrates. Um, and it kind of gave me the, a uh, similarity of like a fleshlight only that it's just like the ring, like the bottom part of it. Um, hmm. uh, so uh, so that's, that's cool. Um, so yeah, so mindful masturbation, so that can help you kind of connect with the present moment and also get your needs met at the same time. And then you're not like, you're not escaping, you're, you're, um, kind of searching in a way. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. You know, in the grand scheme of things. I would just like like some of the times like it's nice to just like have your body react to your own stimuli, if that makes sense. Yes. Mm -hmm. So like, what does it feel like when you put your hand there? What does it feel like um, when you um, when you do these things to yourself? Right. Like a lot of times we don't um, we don't engage in that. Um, we just. Like, we're just very goal-oriented people. We just want to get off. I just want to mm -hmm. What's the fastest way that I can get there? Um, so I'm suggesting slow down. Take, take your time. Um, You've got time right now. We like, sure like, do. Yeah, like, just to be honest with yourself, like, you, you probably have a little bit more time because you don't have all of the social things that maybe you're used to doing. You don't have to like go out or go get lunch or go get dinner or, you know, you don't have to, you know, um, go hang out with your friends or whatever. And so take some, I agree with that, like fully, like take some time and think on yourself. Um, Cause I mean, like that's, you know, at, you know that's one of the big things like to, for me is like, you know, I'm doing a lot of, self-reflection um during this time because i have time to really do it whereas before it was one stressor to the next if it makes sense yeah um, mm -hmm. you know the one problem i have with the pleasure chest uh collection here is and maybe maybe i'm not 100 percent understanding mindful masturbation but it is all dealing with uh, your cock, not your hole. Your, uh, like your hole, like your butthole? Yeah. Oh. Do, do you mean a booty hole? Like, or do you mean <laughs> your whole person? <laughs> or your hole. <laughs> I mean, what I would, what I would uh, recommend there is... Um, I mean, uh, oh, so well, as far as toys go, um, that is something that a lot of researchers, a lot of um, sexual educators have been putting out there is that like, you know, one of the safe um, sex during COVID-19 recommendations is, uh, of course, masturbation, but then using toys. Um, so we want to make sure that we're using toys that like only we're using and that, um uh, that this is a really good time to engage in those toys. So if you are more, um, if you do want to do some anal stimulation, um, you know, I can definitely find some of those. I think there is some, uh, so in the distance toys, um, there is like app controlled sex toys. Uh, and one of those is a butt plug. Um, that you can wear and that your uh, partner can control. So when they press the button, it can start vibrating, um, which I find very enticing uh, and brings up a lot of uh, brings up a lot of like BDSM um, 
and kink uh, ways that like, you know, I think that this is also a, a, a very exciting time for the for the kink community. Uh, like, what is it like to uh, to play uh, from a distance, right? Um, and that gets me super excited, right? Like, so uh, you know, that makes me think about um, you know, like controlled um, like protocols, right? Like, what kind of protocols are you are you having with with the people that you're playing with? You know, since you can't play with them in person. No, mm. One of these days, somebody's going to make uh, a remote contraption uh, where um, you know, it's two parts, one for the bottom, one for the top, where uh, uh, it will actually like uh, uh, simulate how the top is fucking the bottom, but from a distance. Oh. That'll be very advanced. I'm sure. It's like the combination mm. of a fucking machine, but it's controlled by the top fucking a like. Oh my god! And then having some like VR associated yeah. with that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know that that's gonna happen by the end of all this. That's gonna be a thing. <laughs> How to remotely fuck your partner? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or be fucked. Yeah, both sides. Mm -hmm. so like uh so let's talk about um like safety so uh there's a lot of research out there uh on or a lot of articles out there on how to have sex uh sex safely um during COVID-19 so like a lot of the recommendations are you know number one don't have sex with somebody who's ex who's experiencing symptoms of COVID-19 and from what I have heard, uh, that people who are experiencing um, symptoms of COVID-19 um, are in no place to have sex at all. Um, so, you know, so that's like the number one recommendation. The other two is it's perfectly fine to engage in sexual activity with somebody that you're living with. Um, uh, but like to Gary's point earlier, uh, you know, as far as hooking up, how about we don't do that? Well, so, yeah, <laughs> it's tricky, it's dicey, it's complicated. I, I'm going to say this. My comments are not to yuck anybody's yum, but uh, <laughs> statistically studies have been finding, depending on which one and what the population size is, anywhere from 27 to 53% of individuals um, mm -hmm. can be COVID-19 positive and asymptomatic. Mm -hmm. which means that you don't have any symptoms. So you're a carrier and you're a, an asymptomatic individual. So the issue with that is, is that you could easily pass it on to others unknowingly. Um, it's like, think of it this way. It's like being HIV positive and not having gotten tested and not knowing. Mm -hmm. um, only in this case, you, like until you get a test and have a test and get a result back, will you know? Um and on the flip side of it, in terms of like a public health issue, just because an individual gets tested and becomes up negative for COVID-19 does not mean that they're negative forever. Like you were only negative at the time that that test took place. It's like any other test, if that makes sense. So there's a false um, security in going and getting tested and being like, oh, well, I'm negative. I'm cool. No, you were negative at the time you got tested. That it's, yeah. it's just relatively different. It's nothing like HIV, where you know the the paths that you can come, become infected, um, you know, through bodily fluids, through sex, through intravenous drug use. Like, it's very limited in capacity of how it is. We're talking about a virus that can have contact surface, possibly aerosolization, droplet. Like, it's a whole different thing. So hooking up, therefore, becomes very questionable as to the safety because – if you're with another person and you're breathing the same air, even if you're not like face to face and or like mouth to mouth, you know, intimate with them, you're not kissing. Um, you just kind of don't know. So sure. Is it possible both of you could wear gloves and both of you could wear masks and you could fuck each other's brains out? Yeah. Um, I don't know if there's anybody out there studying that, like, in, in the, you know, communicable aspect of that, you know, as to whether or not that's, a, you know, uh, a situation to which you could, you know, 
transmitted. Mask. <laughs> mask for mask, like. <laughs> Totally there's actually totally there's actually a company out there that is selling mask facial masks that say that on it like, yeah like uh boy it, for mask boy for daddy mask for mask <laughs> like it has the words like right on the front of the mask like it's very and it's a little dicey some people have some serious opinions about it because they're kind of like you're monetizing like a very serious issue yeah and but you know i hate to say it but like that's kind of been the thing for a while like if you look on facebook now like pretty much every other ad is like buy a mask. Here's a mask. Here's some fun looking like like facial scarves that will like all the like I see it all the time. So it it you know it it's, it's our capitalist system. Like just just you know. Whatever. Well, I, like, I agree with that, but there's a difference between <laughs> like like the one that I'm waiting to arrive in the mail, which uh, we'll reveal at a later time. Um, <laughs> that I think is really fun and silly. Versus one that's advertising my sexual desire or mm -hmm. uh, like openness or position or do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, so it's, it's a little different. A mask is meant for protection. It's not like wearing a T-shirt that says, you know, my hole is available 24 seven. Totally right. different, you know, <laughs> kind Lobby of thing. Bottom 23. Oh, shit. yeah. So, no, yeah, I understand. Um, and I do know, like, there are, you know, kink, especially in the kink BDSM kind of community, like rubbers or rubber, especially in the rubber community, there are people that wear, like, gas masks, and they, both of them will wear gas masks and still be intimate and play with each other. Like, that's that's a thing. You know, it is a thing where it's masks, like, they're both wearing the mask. Things are happening. I don't, but. M-A-S-K for M-A-S-K. Yeah. Where there are things happening because of the fact that they're wearing the mask. It's it's a whole thing. Like there are whole right. you know things that I, I I don't know. I don't have a lot of knowledge of, so I'm not going to talk on them. <laughs> so, <laughs> but is it, it does happen? Is it possible to have sex in this day and age? Yes. Is it possible to have safe sex and not by safe for STI and HIV? By this I mean like COVID nineteen. It's possible, mm -hmm. but it takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of consciousness and responsibility and awareness to do that. And I think it's um, it's just not hard for me as, as a new public health educator person to be like, you know, seeing individuals who are posting stuff online. You know, I've about probably two times a week now, I'm unfollowing people on Twitter that I was following on my porn Twitter because I'm like, I can't. There's, mm -hmm. there, you're not, you're not explaining where this is coming from, you know, like mm -hmm. I was so horned up. I fucked this boy, you know, and bred him really hard. That sounds sexy. That sounds awesome. However, previous to this posting, you were constantly like regurgitating and, and reiterating previous stuff that you had. This indicates that this was a recent hookup. This indicates mm -hmm. that you did not say recently. I can't talk. I, I can't with you. Mm. Like, it's just hard for me. So, cause you didn't like, and I get that, you know, it's not sexy to talk about like it's it's difficult even outside of the pandemic put put corona bitch aside it's difficult to have a conversation with another person and to be like so when was the last time you got checked you got any diseases what's your story like that's not for most people that's not really titillating that's not exciting it's not a it's not foreplay for most mm -hmm. individuals it's too clinical it's too evasive it's too personal like you know i just yeah. i just want your DNA. Like, how hard is this? <laughs> give me the give me the spunk. I want the baby batter. All the jizz. I'm the cum whore. <laughs> David knows what I'm doing. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> question like, from last night. It was a uh -oh. question from the game last night. Um yeah, like I mean, like you know, like that your your focus is very specific. And so it could be difficult. Is it so I don't know. I'm just like I'm I'm waffling all over the place because I'm I'm finding it difficult to be positive about the fact that you can be playful in person and yet safe. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it it takes because we're I hate to say it, but we're not very mindful individuals. Um, you know, sex sex is most of the time, in my experience, this is my opinion. Like I'm not speaking on behalf of the podcast. You just People do it because they like to do it because it feels good. It's got a surge of hormones. Like it does this thing. Um, and it's usually short lived. It's not a long frame of time. So, you know, seven minutes, 20 minutes 
in the course of a 24 hour day, in the course of a seven day week, in the course of a month, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's real small. Like it's not yeah. uh, a whole lot of time. So I think that's where we struggle because we're like, I have to do all this preparation and blah, blah, blah. I mean, that goes like so far across the board, even including like, you know, people bitching about, you know, prepping to bottom. It's like, I'm like, Hey, like that's just all there is to it. You sometimes you have to invest some time and some energy and some effort. So, sorry, I went on a total soapbox moment. My <laughs> no, I'm I'm so here for that. And then also uh, to kind of piggyback off of that, uh, you were talking about the hormones. So uh, one of the resources that I put in there talks about dose, um, and dose is uh, a is it acronym? Yeah. If it, it? If, yeah. Oh, okay. So an acronym for um, the the hormones that we really need to kind of focus on right now that like we get all the time. So like dopamine, oxytocin, um, serotonin, and um, and epinephrine. Mm -hmm. Uh, So like, you know, like expanding the ways that we get those um, hormones fulfilled is going to be really important. So like, you know, uh, we get... um, let me think of like serotonin, um, but like with the love languages, right? Um, so I know that for myself, uh, physical touch is number one. Uh, I am a very touchy feely person. Um, I am all about the hugs and I am all about the, the making out and all of these things. So this is killing me. However, okay. um, there are, you know, There are other love languages that are important to me, too. So, you know, kind of engaging with that um, is going to be really important. But to kind of go back to the the physical touch, there are ways that we can get our our physical touch and skin hunger met in these times. Um, They may not be by another person, but like one of the things that I recommended to my clients is to get a blanket that you really love, um, curl up in that. And um, watch your favorite movie. Um, obviously, it's not going to be the same. Um, but, you know, uh, these are times. And, yeah. you know, like they have like weighted blankets um, that are good for like for sensory. Uh, so that's another option. But there are ways to satiate your skin hunger for people who are pickle tubs. Um, and I'm a pickle <laughs> ocean. Um Okay, hold up. Okay, wait, hold up. Wait, hold up. Wait, hold up. Wait, hold on. I got I yeah. got There's a couple of things I want to address before David gets to his thing, which might be what I'm thinking of. But uh, prior to that, uh, I need a shout out and a recognition of skin hunger. Yeah, <laughs> you said it twice, and I was like, both times I was like, it just it just shocks me to hear that as a phrase because I've never heard that before. Um, touch so are you talking skin. like a skin hunger, like touch deprivation? So skin hunger is uh, like that need for for physical touch. Um, okay. It is like that that feeling that we get like, oh, I just want to hug right now, right? Like, mm-hmm. so when we're talking about the circles of sexuality, um, that is one of them, uh, skin hunger. Uh, and uh, shout out to uh, Brent Satterley, um, one of my mentors, who uh, when we were learning about the concept of skin hunger, framed it in a way that like some people are pickled, um, like those – those like little, um, you know, those like pack of pickles, <laughs> you know, like the, the ones that you get at the, the grocery store. And then you have people who are like pickled tubs like that. Those those tubs that you see at the grocery store where you have to like roll up your arm and like really get on down there and get yourself a big old dill. Um, like those are the ones so, like, we have a range of, of skin hunger. I myself uh, go beyond the pickle tub and I classify myself as a pickle ocean. So I require a shit ton of, um, of, of physical touch because I am just so skin hungry all the time. Um, Ed, could you pause for a second? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to process all this. <laughs> Cause now I am in trouble when I go into convenience stores and gas stations <laughs> and I see like, it are more in the South, I think where I see like either coolicles or like the pickle, like dill. Songs. <laughs> yeah. I just blew your mind. Didn't you? I don't know what you've done to me. I don't know <laughs> if it's or it's troubled or what. I'm just, I just want to pickle right now. Like I'm... 
<laughs> and here we thought eggplant was the thing. Anyways, like, mm-hmm. no, but I, I get what you mean. Like, it, <laughs> um, it's funny. One of the things I keep do, like I've always done it, but it's it's funny. Like I I'm like I'm, I'm like you, Ed. I love like touch. Um, and believe it or not, one of the things that is kind of kind of cool, like I've always been like the big fan of the virtual, and I always like sign things, like 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 when I say happy birthday to people on Facebook or whatever, I usually give them hugs. I say hugs, like I put it in capital letters, because to me that's my virtual way of doing the physical thing that I would prefer to do, like to wish someone a happy birthday. And believe it or not, like especially now, it seems weird. Like I used to, I was thinking about stopping doing it because reality, we shouldn't really, you know be like we should be physically distancing ourselves and so you know hugs are kind of like a thing but i'm like no so like don't do it because the intent is there right the expression is there and i can't i well i can't not but like to me it's like that's my way of doing it and i hope that the person on the uh, receiving end of that understands that this is until we meet again kind of thing Oh, yeah. I told somebody, I was like, I'm going to need, like, an hour-long hug <laughs> once once I can, maybe even two hours, like, yeah, like yeah. for real. So I go to meetings. So, I, you know, I, I think that all of you know that I'm in recovery. And the thing that is so destroying me is the fact that, like, I cannot hug people who need a hug right now because they are struggling. Um, mm-hmm. and that is definitely my way of helping people is by – um, is by hugging them. And like, I have been classified as like a really world-class hugger in recovery. Um, I'm known for my hugs. So, oh, you know, this is, this is really hard for me, uh, <laughs> personally. Um, so yeah, there's that, you know, pickle ocean. <laughs> just, 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 just douse you in, in, pickle juice and just let you just like wow you know kidding <laughs> also i um i had an experience where uh i was invited to somebody's island on on animal crossing and i showed up to the island i walked up to them you know and their their uh their virtual player and i started to cry <laughs> oh <laughs> it was like i was like physically by somebody that like I haven't seen in a while. Uh, and it was almost like getting a hug. <laughs> mm. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. Shut up, phone. And I think that's one of the things that people are coming to terms with. They may not <laughs> they may not be dealing or coping well with, but I think that people are much more aware even if they don't have the the um capacity to frame it as such but i think people are much more aware of their emotional states um Mm -hmm. now more than ever like whether it be anger or fear or angst or loneliness or lust or love like or happiness or joy like it's all over the place but i think people are much more attuned um because of their um their you know limitations uh, yeah. Like I think about this, I'm about to say something that's completely, uh, you know, um, yeah. I'm just gonna say this, and I'm gonna oh that it's just about me, and people can like not like it, and uh, I get it. Uh, people out there that are struggling with relationships in their home environments, like with like their their partner, their spouse, whatever. I'm like, well, uh, you married that person, and. I hate to say it, but you probably didn't think when you married them or went through the vows or whatever that, like, you would have to actually quarantine with them. But, you know, that's that's the reality of what it is. And now that's what you're facing. I don't know what Mm. else to say about that. Do you know what I mean? It's like I, I can't assist you. With that, it's not my capacity, but I find it personally frustrating that, you know, that some people are like, oh, these kids are driving me crazy. These four walls. And I'm kind of like. Well, welcome, welcome to your inner reality. Mm-hmm. Like there are things like I, I've, I know many, and there, you know, there, to me, there's the flip of it. Like there's the, you know, the awful like things that happening to certain in certain relationships and stuff that we can't really, you know, it's hard to, you know, do things about. But there are things to potentially do about it. But like, you know. I've been home a lot <laughs> these past few um, weeks, and um, 
I it, it's not yet driving me like crazy, but I am getting that like cabin fever ish kind of thing. But I know I have outlets to do that. I have a freaking park like right, right there. Like it's not like it is not like like here's a swing set and you can go swing on the swings. It's just like an open space of ground or grass and stuff. But I could go for a walk. I could walk away, like take a little walk. You know, I could put my mask on and maybe go, you know, walk around the block because I see, you know, I see it. Like I look out the window every once in a while and I see people like actually walking around and jogging and this neighborhood, even before the pandemic was active. Like I, you know, people jogging, people taking walks, walking their, their pet, their dogs and what have you. I, you know, I saw it. There's, there's someone that has a raccoon as a pet and they walk the raccoon. Like I haven't seen it like in a long time, but apparently it's a thing, whatever. Anyway, I would like to see that person personally, but, <laughs> but like, you know, it's out there. It's things that can be done. And, it, you know, and believe it or not, it's a, I could see it being like an immediate, like relief, you know, if these four walls are, your four walls are suffocating you or whatever, you can open the door and just step outside. Like the, the least you can do, is just open a window. Like the other day, um, I up at the, up the top of our steps, there's um, a window that we normally have big like curtains on, and just a couple of times a day, I just flung the curtains open. And yes, I can look over into my neighbor's you know backyard, and there's not a whole lot to see there. But like I can look beyond it and see like the sky and more houses and backyards, and it was just enough to kind of be like oh like there's more out there to see mm-hmm. i mean just because we're quarantined doesn't mean we can't like go outside for a little bit you still yeah. want to do the social distancing thing so if mm-hmm. your neighbor's walking by on the sidewalk make sure you're over six feet away and wave say hi you can still yeah. do stuff it's just mm-hmm. trying to keep that social distancing in place yeah okay. Right. It might, my little tirade a moment ago was mostly about the fact that um, I think now more than ever, people are uh, being forced to recognize or to become more aware of things that they were avoiding previously. And that's and that's also why I um, I said that, like, you know, it's a really important time for us to uh, like, how are we approaching this? Like, we have a wonderful opportunity for those couples who are struggling to um uh to build that connection and that intimacy so one of the things that i put in here was um uh there's a a couples therapist um by the name of john gottman he has uh he's awesome like it's him and his wife and uh one of the tools that he uses are love maps so that is like the building the relationship friendship and uh they have an app um which is similar to the uh the 20 the 32 questions to fall in love but they're questions to help um build the intimacy with you and your partner um and you can do that um you know like i suggest setting aside 2 hours a week to um to build your uh friendship with your partner um and being very intentional about that um and you know we had a episode i don't know which episode it was but the communication episode um you know here we are talk Mm -hmm. uh talk to the person that you're living with tell them how you're feeling tell them what needs you have um you know there are some wonderful resources in that um in that podcast that, uh, you know, in order to facilitate that conversation, in order to identify your needs, identify your feelings, um, and, and tools on how to get those, get those needs met, how to ask for things. Um, because I, I don't think that a lot of people feel comfortable asking for what they need. Mm. <laughs> and yeah, FYI, sorry, just cause you, cause of, because it's there, the um, link in the chat or in our in our um, document is for uh, the Apple Store, the app Apple the Mac app. There is an app available for um, Android, FYI. Just yeah, just to make sure that everyone's okay. aware. Like, 
you just have to, you just have to look up Goffman card decks and you'll find it. Mm hmm. Um, so so, yeah, I mean, so that I think is a wonderful suggestion um, for couples who are going stir crazy. Uh, uh, and then also, uh, as far as the our needs, like so we were talking about like physical touch. Um, uh, I use this with clients and it's funny, <laughs> but like, uh, you know, talking about your love languages um, and that doesn't even just apply for. Uh, you know, romantic relationship that applies totality for all of your relationships. And it, and it talks about how you like to receive and also give your love to others. So one way to frame the love languages is um, using Britney Spears, give me a sign or hit me baby one more time. Uh, the lyrics. Uh, so we have physical touch. My loneliness is killing me. Words of affirmation. I'm just going to start singing now. I must confess, I still <laughs> believe uh, quality time. When I'm not with you, I lose my mind. Uh, <laughs> gift giving. Give me a sign. And then acts of service. Hit me, baby, one more time. Um, so there is also a quiz on there for you to find out what your love languages are. And if physical touch is your number one, you will also receive output for your number two um, or like how they're ranked. So if you can't get your physical needs met at this point in time, um, maybe you want to hit on that number two, right? Like what is that? For me, it's words of affirmation. Uh, so I want to talk to people. I want to give people compliments. I want to receive compliments. Uh, so like that's going to be the thing that is going to help me get my needs met um, during this time. Mm. What about, what about, uh, what about y'all? What are your love languages based on uh, uh, spirits? Hit me baby one more time. <laughs> I don't necessarily want to do to, to hit me baby one more time, but I'm trying to think um, I've done this quiz before and I am trying to remember which one it was. And I think it was actually words of, I think it was words of affirmation. I think it was words of affirmation. It was either words of affirmation or acts of service. And I have to, I'm actually, I was going to try to really quickly go through it again, but I don't think it's a quick quiz. So I will wait. But um, yeah, so I think mine, if I remember, is um, I must confess, I still believe if I'm remembering correctly. Gary? Um, so I've not done the quiz, but I'm thinking about it. I'm going to say it's probably between quality time and gift giving. Because like, what matters most to me is to be able to spend time with another individual. And it doesn't have to be quote unquote intimate. So like, and for anyone who's ever had very long talks with me, <laughs> <laughs> they, they probably could see why I say that. Like, um, but I don't know, like the gift giving kind of is interesting to me. So these are my languages, not how I express myself. Hmm. Do you know, Ed? Um, these are so uh, the way that I frame this is uh, like the love languages like for me, like towards me okay. are um, can be different. Right. Like so like my like the, the love languages to me. Uh, maybe like I love physical touch. I love words of affirmation, but my towards others, I love giving gifts. Right. Which, uh, is, which is more me. Like that's, yeah. that's why I was asking it the way it was. Cause I'm like, well, the Britney lyric is give me a sign. And it's like, to me, it's a little kind of in between, but like, mm -hmm. I, I don't have a problem with, I enjoy like gifting things to people like that. If that's a possibility, um, for me to make that happen because to be, there's a joy in that, um, of giving joy to other people that way. So, yeah. And then also understanding, um, other people's love languages. So like, just because our love language is physical touch, our partner's love language may be gift giving. So like sometimes, um, you know, they, they're not going to match up and, you know, we need to be in tune with our partner's love languages. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, so I think that, like, now is a really good time to kind of rediscover that. Um, and these can change. So, like, have your love languages changed since the last time that you've taken this quiz? Um, 
And is it uh, is it changed now that we're in this um, social isolation? So like now uh, quality time might be really important to me. Now um, words of affirmation may be really important. I mean, hell, I got um, one of my friends dropped off cupcakes to me yesterday and I I started to cry because it was oh. the greatest thing in the world. <laughs> right? like, cupcakes. Uh, oh, they were delicious. Were they tasty cakes? <laughs> they were not. They were Oreo cupcakes. Ooh. They were not tasty cakes, Gary. Get your mind out of the gutter. Well, first of all, <laughs> there's there's so many entendres within that. Tasty cakes is an actual brand. I mean. tasty cakes is actually a reference to like a beautiful booty uh, <laughs> that you want to eat. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> um. So here's something that I wanted to also talk to you all about is like what is like the future. So I haven't seen any uh, research on re-entry. Mm. Say what? Re-entry? Oh my gosh, that's funny. <laughs> you didn't get that before? No, not no, I didn't. <laughs> you got it. Come you on, Ed. Where's the consent? Sorry. Oh. <laughs> As we like to say, it's my foreplay. <laughs> nice. Uh, so, like, if um, you know, here we are. We are social distancing. We're isolating. What's going to happen when this goes away? What do you think is going to happen? So, oh God. So, first of, I'm kind of. I'm gonna. I think. A lot of people, like, because you see it all the time. You see people talking about, like, they're going to be hosting these big-ass orgies, and, and they can't wait because they're going to fuck everybody that moves, essentially, and all of this stuff. Like, you keep hearing that, and then I go in my mind, and I go, like, I feel that's not going to be the case for some people. I feel some people will still be hesitant. Some people will still be, like, slowly distant like you know like basically guiding in gently you know like taking things a few at a time like oh like i'm gonna like play with this person that i've been really wanting to play with since you know this all started and i'm gonna take this opportunity now that i can to like invite them over and play with them but i'm not gonna go like buck wild crazy and host this orgy or go to this you know play party or run to the bathhouse and do all these things however I have a feeling that that's also going to happen, that there's going to be this sudden rush of things that will be like going, you know, crazy because we've been longing for connections and socializing and play for so long that people are going to take it to the extreme and go buck wild. Like they're going to go like maybe to the point that they may not be considerate of themselves are their partners play partners you know physical and emotional and 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 you know health and safety like i i i want to be realistic and i also want to be cautious but i feel like it's going to be both things there's going to be people that will take their time and slowly you know engage and then there are going to be people that are going to go all the way to the end and just like try to fuck like bunnies until something else happens. Mm-hmm. And I think there are benefits to that, right? Like, I think that, like, people are going to start, um, ex like, pushing their boundaries mm -hmm. um, in a positive way, right? Like, I think people are going to be more open to, like, trying new things. Um, but, like, negatively, I think that a lot of people are going to take some risks and... Um, and sexual risk taking, <laughs> there is a shit ton of research on the negative, uh, the negative outcomes of that. Mm -hmm. um, so I can only imagine that we're going to see a, um, a potentially a huge increase of um, potentially maybe some sexual violence, some uh, some STI risk uh, or some STI uh, rates. Um, and I'm really shocked that I haven't seen anything yet about mm -hmm. 
communicating this, institutions, um, you know, uh, ways to help with that. Um, yeah. And I know that, like, you know, I was really interested to talk to Gary because, you know, from a public health perspective, this is super important. It, it is. Um, I was thinking about it while you said it, and I'm like, well, one of two things is, well, maybe three things. It's either not on the radar, so there's no preparation for the end. And when we get to the end, if there was preparation, then people are going to put stuff out there, like, maybe a little too late. Or, possibly because it wasn't on the radar, it's all going to be catch-up after the fact. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, now now we have all this stuff being reported and we have to address it and we're late. Um, mm -hmm. And part of that could be because I know for me, like myself and my coworker, both of us under the HIV grant are working on COVID index and contact tracing explicitly. We are part of that group that are doing that thing. Our main job is not eradicated. It is not exactly sidelined. But it's very minimalized because the dynamics have completely changed. Like, especially for me, because my my core job of what I was hired for, I haven't been fully trained for. And our clinic that we operate is now minimally like open and available to the local public. Um, so a lot of priorities have shifted. So we've got public health educators, public like we've got nurses, we've got all these folks that have regular jobs, and a lot of that has been diminished like to an as necessary level while we're all working on this other thing that's come up as a part of like this big command team structure. Mm -hmm. So uh, the reason I say all that is to help people understand that it's like, you know, we're still considered essential. We're still working, but our priorities have shifted because of what's going on. So it could very well be that maybe we are taking our eyes off the prize, like of the stuff that's going to be coming. And it is, it is, it's challenging and difficult because like I've had some ideas about replacing programs we've had in the past that are currently not operational. Um, and other people are kind of in agreement, but we're, but it's, it's preaching to the choir issue because <laughs> we're all working together on this other thing. So we're not all really available for the ideas, like for the, for the other stuff. So, yeah. It's a, it's challenging. And that's, I think that's kind of a, a I mean, it, that makes sense. We're focusing on something that's kind of definitely like the big thing to focus on right now. Like we're trying to like, cause not that those other things can wait, but like really we need to focus on this right now. And then hopefully by focusing on this, we can get things done and then we resolved and then we can try to get back to what we were doing before. So I want to go back to your question at about like uh, to us about where what was it how, like how do you think things are going to be like upon reentry right um, my answer is it depends on how long this goes on and the reason why is because the longer it goes on the more people have to deal with it the more they have to deal with themselves mm. if this ends quickly people can fall right back to old patterns super easy because the old pattern is still fresh. But mm. if we go, if we go six months, eight months, nine months, a year, and we have that much time, new behaviors are learned, new patterns are established, new, and the older stuff kind of falls away. Um, mm. I'm not saying that people won't spring back to old stuff, but it'll be very challenging to go back to the way it was before. And I think that's what people are struggling with in society because, you know, states, counties, governments, nations, like um, communities are trying to determine like, when can life go back to normal? Like when can businesses reopen? When can I have some sense of normalcy? Because normalcy is merely a construct of the day to day. And the new day to day is very discomforting. I don't like where, you know, the way things are right now. I wanna go back to what I knew. That's a human condition. We're not usually, you know, proponents of we can be a proponent of change. We just don't like it happening. You know, it's kind of like, what do you mean? Like, I have to buy large eggs. All of my recipes use medium eggs. This is not acceptable. This throws up everything. <laughs> I have to deal with this. You know, there's stress and anxiety and all that kind of stuff that comes along with it. But where we've moved into where like 
what, five, six, seven, eight weeks in, depending on where you are in the U.S. Like, So the curve is happening that people are reaching that 28 days that we talk about to build a new habit. Like, mm -hmm. So in another month, let's say, if we're still continuing on it, we haven't really changed a whole lot, then behaviorally people have learned to adapt to being home more often to – like how to connect from that. I'm not saying that they've made healthy decisions or patterns, but a lot of that changes. So I don't disagree with you, Damon, about like the whole like, you know, fuck like bunnies in a, you know, in an in orgies thing. I think some of that's still going to go on because because there's a bacchanal like aspect of, of our behavioral like thing. You know, um, what hasn't been described or discussed is what about all the addictive things that we haven't been, had diagnosed to date? Mm -hmm. So like. That like that have been mitigated or affected by us because now we can't necessarily do them. Um, there may be a good number of people who just weren't realizing that you know they were a social addict, um, and that's not meant to be a negative. Like you can be addicted to healthy things um, relatively. So like it, it will that swing as a pendulum and go in the other direction? I don't know. Mm -hmm. If 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 you know, I think some things will. I think some people will go a little little. Uh, a little gusto, uh, mm -hmm. you know, like when restaurants and bars and, and all that kind of stuff open. Sure. I absolutely see that some people will be like, <laughs> let me at it, um, <laughs> you know, and let, look at this. I've got $700 worth of gift cards. I'm going to be a glutton. Um, you know, and they're going to go to all the things and do all the stuff and all the people, whatever. <laughs> do all the people. Yeah. But I, I don't know how practical that will be. Um, <laughs> I think it's a lot about personality and personal experience. If you're a person who's like um, more cautious, maybe more science, like, uh, you know, bound and, and kind of look at that stuff, you might be like, well, I'm, I'm willing to put my feet in the, in the, you know, in the kiddie pool. Like I'm willing to, mm -hmm. to try to test things out and see how stuff goes. Um, mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of humanity and society. There are people out there that are just like, let me at it. Like, you know, and there are others that are more like me, like, oh, go right ahead. <laughs> you may be the first gen the first wave the early adopter go ahead and test that out let me know if you get hurt if you fall down <laughs> like you know because like, <laughs> i'm not i'm not willing, one to be willing to put myself on that line so to speak mm -hmm. um to see you know mm -hmm. i, I, I agree feedback. yeah i wouldn't I, I agree with that like that's the big thing like there may be a lot of people that will just like for lack of a better phrase hold back and wait until like after this first wave, as you call it, kind of everything that happens, there could be, cause I, I ugh, gosh, it's the worst thing to think about, but I feel like there are a lot of people that are really happy to say, I told you so. Like there are those kind of people that are just like, you know, cause, and they're gonna be like the ones that like go out and do everything and get a little crazy and something ends up happening and we, you know, like they've talked about, like there may be a second wave, there may be other, all this other, you know, other factors. And there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be like, Hmm, I told you so. I told you if you wait, if you did it too soon or, or, or whatever, and then you ended up, you know, this was going to happen. And then, and then like, I, the, the, yeah, I could see that being a thing too. Not, and again, not necessarily in that negative, like, you know, Nelly kind of, you know, Nancy kind of way, but in that, like, it's sometimes good to be cautious. It's sometimes good to wait and get all the information before you move, before you react, as it were. You know, if they say, because we, we actually, I think here in Ohio, we have the governor's going to speak tomorrow about the the next steps in regards to reopening the the, the state with stuff they're going to have they're having a press conference tomorrow um for me um depending on what that means like my plan if they reopen where i work as an example um i'm going to ask if it's all possible to keep working from home for a little while mm -hmm. just a little while longer to while things kind of get going all right my hope is that my company will slow, like, will like, okay, you can come back to work, but work from home for another couple of weeks while we do all this and, you know, just that and the other. I feel the same thing should hopefully happen, but who knows? <sighs> yeah. Um, 
<laughs> Everyone's going to kind of approach it their own way to go to something that you were saying, Damon. Um, I've said this, I don't know how many times in the past week. Like it, it's, it's my broken record, like comment right now about no matter what, there will be no winning mm. and there can be no winning. There isn't a way to come out ahead and everybody gets the better mm -hmm. of, of whatever it is. So people who are in power, who were given responsibility to make decisions, they will never satisfy everybody. It's just mm -hmm. not possible. And it goes for all of us. It is not possible to satisfy anybody else outside of ourselves. And even then, if we don't have the skills and the ability, we can't like help ourselves either. Do you know what I mean? Like we, we, we can perceive to, you know, want to desire to be a winner at our own life, at our own uh, measurements. But unless we have the, you know, the abilities to do that, the, we have the awareness to get the skills from other people to have, you know, educated individuals like Ed, you know, make themselves available, um, through either their work or services or, um, you know, or volunteerism, you just, you're not going to be able to do that. And that to me is, I think probably the most frustrating part right now is that, um, you know, you, you can try all you want to change the minds of people to be better but that doesn't mean that they want to. Mm -hmm. and, and that can be really, really challenging during this time because you could say the writing's on the wall and they're like, yeah, but who wrote it? <laughs> <laughs> and you're just like, um, you know, you're just really frustrated by the, um, the, the, the inability to come to the table, I guess, like to, to be in agreement even to maybe be in agreement to disagree, like, um, yeah, and and that's what I think a lot of us are facing right now is is the practicality, uh, you know, who who is in one circle versus another. Um, I'm very much in the science, you know, portion of things. I believe in like the scientific method and the concept of like proving something, as opposed to just going with it because someone told me to. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I've I've been too much at the detriment end of of people telling me to do things that was not for the, my betterment. So, I will own my bias. <laughs> <laughs> um anything else that is we're getting here towards the wrapping up the show? No, I mean I think we kind of talked about everything. So, I mean, you know, in kind of overview, um I think that it, you know, like what we kind of talked about was the fact that um you know, we still have sexual needs. Um, they are valid. Um, and we can meet those in this time through very many different ways. Um, we may find that our uh, sexual uh, drive, our sexual libido has been increased. It may be decreased. And like both of those are totally valid responses or it may be the same. Um, you know, and I'm just asking that people... Um, that people kind of adapt, that they uh, look at this opportunity as, or look at this as an opportunity to um, kind of increase our sexual playbook, um, to uh, increase our intimacy with ourselves and with others. Um, there is this wonderful, great quote about intimacy from this book called The Passion, um, The Secrets to a Passionate Marriage that says, uh, intimacy is knowing who you are and letting somebody else in on the secret. And I think that is, um, a great quote to say that we have a we have an opportunity here to get to know ourselves better and to allow others to know who we are at the same time, um, mm -hmm. and also that like yes we can still have sex at this time it is not sexually transmitted but don't get crazy um, you know like you, you know like take take the recommendations. Um, <laughs> You know, like take the recommendations, um, you know, stay safe and know that there are other Sorry. ways to get your knee. Oh, you are totally fine. I love that slurp. I um, tried, to, <laughs> I tried to hear beforehand and then I realized the button didn't take. Fuck. Uh, so like know that like there are ways to get your needs met um, that we don't have to have them physically met. We can have them met in other ways as well. Um, and... Yeah. Uh, masturbate. Uh, phone sex. 
uh, video sex. Um, let those be your friends for right now. Mm-hmm. And I, 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 yeah, I totally agree with that. And I think, and I, my biggest thing I think for me is like, as Gary kind of mentioned, like this is kind of the normal for now, you know, and depending how, how long it goes, like you may learn some things that you like, you know, why were you feeling the way you feel? Why were you always going out and doing this and that and the other? Like maybe there's a reason for self-reflection and maybe you're thinking, oh, well, maybe I was doing it because I don't feel so great about myself. Like, you know, those kind of things. And that's, a, I think this is a really awesome time to kind of learn that about yourself. And maybe, again, depending on how long this goes, um, learn some new habits or new, like, parts of yourself or desires about yourself that you didn't think you or didn't realize you had. Um, I, I Yeah, I kind of agree with that. Like, you can, for me, like, right now, I'll just be honest with you, like, some of the things I'm enjoying not doing right now is not, like, doing it every day like i used to masturbate every day like and one of the things i'm enjoying right now just because it's been a thing is like not doing it every day give myself a little like not so much me time <laughs> and mm-hmm. and then having some you know me time and enjoying that release because sometimes it's really awesome to kind of gauge you know the 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 logic part of my brain goes like oh that's 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 very interesting how far that went or (laughs) how much of it that was or um putting that there as opposed to there really kind of brought things up to the forefront and my mind kind of went ooh, like that yeah like there's uh, i'm really kind of enjoying those things right now yeah (laughs) <laughs> it's a, this is a good time to watch uh, instructional videos mm. is that what they're called <laughs> I will say this much Pornhub has been really awesome in like just doing random searches for just certain things that my mind kind of like thinks about um like kind of similar to what Gary was saying, one of the things I'm kind of enjoying is watching like the um, the voyeuristic um, where someone it's this I, not so much I like it, but like the spy camera kind of aspect of things where it's it's not like here's the camera like da 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 da. It's like there's a camera maybe hidden over here while people are you know doing their thing and my hope is that people know about it but sometimes they don't um but i've kind of enjoyed those kind of like looking in on something that maybe i i shouldn't be watching or shouldn't be seeing because it's very yeah oh yeah oh my (laughs) <laughs> one, thing, okay. um, one thing that I've been uh, watching that I got from our friend AJ is uh, these ASMR videos um, of uh, this like daddy <laughs> and he is, uh, you know like kind of talking to you like he would be in bed um, and that has been really emotionally validating for me right mm-hmm. like um uh, you know, like they're like, he'll like say, I'm so proud of you. You worked so hard today. Right. Like, Oh, um, that's oh. been really, that's kind of been my thing. Uh, huh. It's your own virtual daddy today. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I guess there's an argument for that to be an essential business or an essential, an essential <laughs> work. I mean, I can see that. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about it. I'm like, I could have a whole side business if I wanted, I guess. <laughs> there you go, Gary. Where I'm just, you know, being affirmative to people. You can do it. No, so, I mean, I'm definitely people telling people can people add to, the, to their channel. 
And I've noticed a lot of porn stars, uh, like on uh, like just for friends or like only for fans, like they are offering these specials and uh, I think they are really capitalizing on the like on how kind of important people are trying to get their their sexual needs met. And there's one Will Angel um, who I have an eye for, uh, but he is doing a, like this whole like series where he is uh, masturbating while talking to you. Um, and like being very, uh, being very mentory and very, being very sensual and, um, it's absolutely adorable and very sexy. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> don't know who he is, but I just did a Google search. Uh, the first few pictures are very nice. Oh but yeah. I don't know if that's him. Uh, are we referring to the one who, uh, does the muscle bear porn muscle bear porn yes and a lot of his his porn is uh verbal uh he uses a lot of um like self-soothing and like encouragement in his porn um which i have finding has been really uh enticing to me it is his videos are very much it's like he's this big, masculine, beefy guy, and it's very, very erotic. But he's also very caring. Mm-hmm. Yeah, while still being that like masculine figure. Mm-hmm. Uh, he really subverts a lot of uh, masculine norms. Like there, there was a few videos where he talked about, um, uh, like. Uh, that it's like sexy to be vulnerable and um and what that means it's it was really awesome hmm. mm-hmm. i'm looking for him online right now <laughs> <laughs> okay well while gary searches for his next you know video to watch jeff uh, is it that time I think so. Oh, well, I suppose that's uh, the show's ending. Oh. Anyways. <laughs> Plenty of ways to contact us. Pop over to our website, CubsOutLoud.com. Shoot us an email at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. Leave us voicemail at 60 or otherwise at 361 C-O-L Talk. That's 361-265-8255. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and YouTube at CubsOutLoud in the appropriate place of the URL. You can join our entourage chat where we talked about peen earlier <laughs> at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. Uh, you can find out when we're planning to do these shows at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. You can get merchandise such as this version one uh, Cubs Out Loud shirt or a Cubs Out Loud hat and many other accoutrements at zappel.com slash Cubs Out Loud. And remember, you can go to other countries' versions of that website. Just scroll through the bottom. There's a way to switch your country um you can also subscribe to us at patreon.com slash cubs out loud for as little as a buck a month or as much as you want whatever you know your your choice uh if you're you just want to make a one-time donation you can always go to paypal.me slash cubs out loud as well uh you can uh rate us on itunes subscribe to us at google play podcasts and spotify as well find me anywhere in the internet it says box that box copy box cub box something or other um uh, i am theater cub 79 on most bear related sites or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on twitter if you would like to get in touch with me online you can pretty much find me anywhere as gare bear 73 that's g-a-r-b-e-a-r 73 and, and i am uh, I am uh, Edward Angelini Cook on Facebook, on uh, other socials. I'm uh, Unicub underscore Sex Brain Wizard. And on Twitter, you can find me at Eddie H. Cook. Um, and also, you can visit me at my new website, um, eactherapy.com. There you go. He's, he's a the therapist, too. So you've got other services available. <clears throat> Yeah. You can uh, hire me to give a talk at your business or something. There you go. And with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, good night. everybody.
<laughs> I'm looking at y'all. <laughs>